really like your picture, don't you? You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black, if you ever thought of it. Saying Will I you misrepresented get it myself. Away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. You want me to knock you in the head? Well, I want you to I want you to swear get to God on the Bible me. that you walked on the moon. Me, okay. If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you if you don't leave me alone. So why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Cyril, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. Well, you're talking to the wrong guy. Why don't you talk to the administrator in NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. I don't hit people, but you're going to be on the deck unless you get well, I'm heading out. I appreciate it. Get the hell out of Well, I take your stuff and get the fuck out. Why don't you quote me and say it's bullshit? I'm in the shadows in her uncle. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Of, shit. of lunar orbit being falsified. Being falsified? Correct. We've got an unedited tape from a source at That's the Johnson me. Space Center. Yes. Totally nonsense. Mr. Seibel, you do not deserve answers. If you show this publicly, you're open for a lawsuit. Okay? I mean, do you have Neil Armstrong interviewed already? No, he, he doesn't want to be interviewed. Well, I, I know. Why does he, why does he not give interviews? <clears throat> well, because that's his personal uh, choice. And I guess it's mine, in a way, to do things uh, when they've been uh, researched and worked out as far as a business arrangement. This is not news. This is not an anniversary. Well, actually it is. We found uh, a very unique reel of footage that we have queued up to show you. Yeah. And it's from the mission. And to our knowledge, no one has ever seen it before. Mm -hmm. And it's 30 years old. And, and you want me to see this while you have me on camera? Well, and to, and to tell us what it is. <laughs> I mean, it, it's... Uh, well, I don't know why I should do that. It's a, it, well, it's a very it, unique I, Well, footage. it may be that I need to see it, and then we sit down and we talk about what you're taking a picture of. I don't see where there's an advantage in it for me to do what you're asking me to do. I see all sorts of pitfalls. I see <clears throat> people who have managed to talk to somebody. Who did you talk to in our office? I talked with uh, Heather at Tor Books. Yeah, but is this helping book promotion? Are you going to be putting anything out during the time that I'm marketing books? See, Heather is not, does not represent me for the things you're talking about. She represents <clears throat> um, a, a book selling activity. I think when you see the footage, you'll you'll see that it's what? very extraordinary, one okay. of a kind, okay. behind the scenes yeah. type of footage. Yeah. Well, if it is, why do you have access to something that no one else has seen before? Serendipity, I guess. And uh, it was recorded on the 18th of what? Of July, 1969. Do you remember this? In the 18th? Yeah. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, Goldstone says that the TV looks so great. Over. Yeah. Okay, uh, Roger. We're, uh, I'm in on Earth. Hi, Roger. 
Roger, Neil. We just wanted a narrative such a weekend when we get the playback, we can sort of correlate what we're saying. Thank you very much. Well, we shut out the sun coming in some of the other windows into the spacecraft, so uh, it's looking through a, uh, a uh, number one window, and there isn't any uh, reflected light. And we only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. We can see uh, the oceans with uh, a definite blue cast, see white bands of major cloud formations across the Earth. Uh, Roger, the ATC is working real well. The F-22 looks good, over. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, did you copy? Over. Hey, did you copy, uh, Charlie? Uh, Roger, your transmission the last couple of times have been about uh, two by, over. Okay, how do you read me now? Right here, five by now. Now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. What, what is your uh, proposition that we didn't go to the moon? I know for a fact that you did. Huh? I know for a fact that you did not. You know for a fact that we did not. That's correct. And you'll see this paper. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not interested in, in satisfying your suppositions when there's all this evidence that we did. This proves, as you see, that you're using the window to demonstrate that you were halfway to the moon when you were Turn the camera off, please. Turn the camera off. Oh, shit. It shows that you're in Earth orbit. Now, if the moon is three days away, and this is late on the 18th, how could you possibly walk on the moon two days later when this was shot on the 18th? And you want me to sit in front of a camera while you're taking pictures, you're showing this, and then you want to see my reaction? I know for a fact that That's slimy journalism. Do you realize that? If, if you ought to be ashamed of yourself. The document that I have in here, you'll find that it's not. But this is a personal plea to do what is right. Well, we sit and we talk about things ahead of time. This is the document that you want to see. I know for a fact. But what it is you're trying to do is unethical. You don't believe that? No, I do not. Well, then, then we have a difference of opinion. The circumference of the window this is where you're using the window the yeah. spacecraft to appear to be the Earth far away. Yeah. We got the raw footage of it. We have an auxiliary track, so I'm prompting you when to speak. You believe in UFOs? No, I do believe not. we've been visited by... Well, why do no, you want don't. to believe this? I know, for, I know for a fact. We've had this analyzed. And, and this, this is the window. And you're in, and it's dated by an atomic clock at the Goldstone tracking station, which is on the tape. Well, you're Seven. talking to the wrong guy. Why don't you, you talk to the administrator at NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. We're I, know not... for, I know for a fact that it didn't. And this tape would prove it in a court of law. Subsequently, It would. Why don't you try? Why don't you put your money into a court of law and see how people laugh at you? You want it. No, no one has laughed. camera working. No, no, no one has laughed. And, and this makes you the, the real famous person who has discovered this and reveals all this stuff. What an ego you must have to want to propel yourself like this. That's not why I'm doing it. And God knows that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the truth to come out because I think it was wrong. You can also notice how the astronauts. No, but you're doing it the wrong way. You don't mislead somebody. If you didn't go to the moon, that's misleading people. I'm, t I'm showing you okay, this tape. Okay, we went to the moon. We're not misleading anybody. Then, then how is it possible this that is this, this is the window? It's shot to make it look like. Look, you can manufacture all you want with this. This is straight. This isn't manufactured. Sure. You know that it isn't. So that of an interior of the astronauts at work. I believe this would prove it in a court of law that you did not go to the moon. It's dated on the 18th. It proves when you remove the you give me your business card. It's all in there. It's all in there.
Here they remove part of the crescent insert. This proves that it's the window. You can see them removing the crescent insert that you did to create the terminator line in front of You're the You're so full of shit, I can't Remember believe it. If you show this publicly, you're open for a lawsuit. Okay? What was the temperature like in the spacecraft on the moon? Well, the lunar module uh, that was uh, the vehicle that we landed on the moon, it, it was uh, just like this room we're sitting in here right now. We had a thermostat and uh, it worked a little different than the air conditioning in a house or a building. However, it had the same effect. So uh, if it was too hot, we moved it up a little cooler and so we could get just the right temperature we wanted. Now, when we put on our spacesuits and close them up, then we had a backpack on and in that back was a, a, essentially an air conditioner too, a different kind, a kind that would work in a vacuum and then we could keep uh, our suits the right temperature because human beings, even though we've got a lot of good capabilities, you know, our brains are amazing, our eyes are amazing, we don't perform well if we're not within a really narrow temperature band. If we get too hot, we sweat, we don't do well. If we get too cold, we shiver and we don't do well. So it's important for human beings to have temperature control. And of course we do that on Earth real well. If the LEM didn't have climate control would it, and had air in it, would it be hot or cold without the climate control? If you just took a, a lunar module and, the, well let's take the climate control and it fails. All right, what happens then, you've got air in, sitting there, it's, uh, it's uh, 70 degrees. If the lunar module is setting in the sun, which it always is, then slowly but surely that temperature inside is going to go up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you ain't going to make it because you're going to cook long before that. What you're powered the air conditioning? Uh, what powered the air? Batteries. You had a, a number of big batteries in the lunar module. They powered pumps. They powered the air conditioning, they powered the communication system, and that's the reason we were only able to stay on the moon 33 hours. Later on, we got a little better batteries, more batteries, and we could stay longer. But batteries turned out to be, for the weight involved, the thing that gave you the power, Now, this, uh, the best. Now, the command module, which had to last from the moon and back 10, 12 days, then batteries would have been too heavy, and so we used fuel cells there which took hydrogen and oxygen and put them together and made electricity. So it depends on, like in a car, you wouldn't want a fuel cell now because you, a battery can do the job. But if you were trying to replace the engine, maybe you could use some fuel cells to drive the motors. Be too expensive now, but maybe someday. What was the power of the engine that descended to the moon? The rocket engine? Yeah. The rocket engine that we used to descend to the moon was uh, a very simple rocket engine. Uh, it operated at low pressure so that it was like running your car at 30 miles an hour, not running your car like a race car. The, the engines we used to launch from Earth was like running your car at race car speeds, you know. So everything had to be just right. But we were interested in safety paramount right there. We didn't have last minute checks we could do. We only had one engine, it couldn't fail, so it ran at lower pressure. And uh, w when you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. Any ill effects from the Van Allen radiation belts? No, now I'm not sure we went far enough out to, to encounter the Van Allen radiation belt. Maybe we did. Beginning at an altitude of 1,000 miles and extending an additional 25,000 miles lay lethal bands of radiation called the Van Allen radiation belts. Every space mission in history with humans on board, from both the United States and Soviet Union, from the first in 1961 to the present, has been well below this deadly radiation field. Mercury, Gemini, Soyuz, Skylab, the Space Shuttle, all maintained altitudes well below 1,000 miles. All except Apollo. I don't know the distance to the Van Allen radiation belt. And if we did, it wasn't a problem. We, if we were going to encounter it, then we would have had to build the spacecraft and the spacesuit to, uh, to, to not give humans a problem. You, you don't just build something and hope it works. You study to see what uh, the threats are the environment is, and then you say, how thick do I have to make the metal on the spacecraft 
so that going through this kind of radiation or these kind of meteoroids, it won't get hurt. And so then we build it that way. The belts are 1,000 miles to 25,000 miles above the earth. We, then we went right out through them. No effects on your cells? Mm -mm, didn't even know it. I don't think anybody, well, maybe somebody said you went through the radiation belt, but we didn't feel it inside and we didn't get any you know, added radiation. In 1998, the space shuttle flew to an altitude of 350 miles, one of its highest altitudes ever, hundreds of miles below the beginning of a field of radiation that was so severe that the astronauts inside of their shielded spacecraft and inside of their shielded spacesuits saw flashes of light with their eyes shut that they described as shooting stars due to radiation penetrating first the shuttle's shielding, then their spacesuit shielding, then their skulls, and finally the retinas of their closed eyes. As a result, CNN issued the following report, noting NASA's unpredicted surprise. The radiation belt surrounding Earth may be more dangerous for spacewalking astronauts than previously believed. Scientists say the phenomena known as the Van Allen belts can spawn killer electrons when the Earth's magnetic field changes. These electrons that are being studied could have an important effect, not only on satellites, which has happened in the past, but could also affect the astronauts by creating large doses of radiation that could influence their health. The electrons can penetrate through various materials, including spacesuits, and can pass through, in fact, the walls of the space station, and can create high charges deep inside of these objects. No strange... Uh, occurrences. Mm -mm, nothing like that. The uh, space fact, shuttle. Uh, go ahead. The space shuttle went to 365 miles a few years ago uh -huh. because I worked in news. Uh -huh. I saw CNN. They said that the radiation belts surrounding Earth are more dangerous than previously believed because the astronauts saw shooting stars with their eyes closed oh, just man, when they got within from 600. Radiation belt. We saw shooting stars, but they're not shooting stars from with your eyes closed, although they look like it. Uh, if you're out in space beyond the Van Allen belt, and probably within the Van Allen belt, and close your eyes, and just pay attention, you don't notice it unless you pay attention, then all of a sudden you'll see a little flash like a shooting star, except it's like that. There goes one this way. Then one just blossoms. And then not that fast. Maybe you wait three minutes or two minutes and one goes whoosh. And what's happening is cosmic rays are hitting the uh, back of your eye and exciting those sensors in the back of your eye. So that's what you see. And they got high enough apparently to close it. My guess is in Earth orbit, if you closed your eyes and just paid attention, that you would see them. The first time they were seen was when they went to 365 miles. Yes. That's 650 miles below or away from the radiation. Yeah, see, it, it's below. My guess if they just did it tonight. But see, if you're not, if you're just going to sleep or closing your eyes or it's dark, you don't notice them. But if you'll close your eyes and pay attention, which we had an experiment to do, by the way, then you see them whistling by. Not on our mission, by the way, they hadn't been discovered yet. I saw them one day on the moon. It wasn't dark, and it was kind of dark, and I saw this flash of light, and it looked like it was on the moon, but really it wasn't. It was a flash of light in my eye. Where were you when the Apollo 1 fire happened? Apollo 1 fire? I was uh, in my office at uh, the Johnson Space Center. It was about 6 in the evening. I was working late there at my desk. I got a phone call, and... Uh, a voice on the other end said their name, and I said, okay. They said, I knew who it was. It was the flight director or someone down at the Cape during the test, and he said, we've lost the Apollo 1 crew. We think we've lost the Apollo 1 crew. I said, well, where are they? Have you uh, ever they, read the congressional report on that? Sure. They considered it at that point that it would be extremely difficult to go to the moon within two and a half years from that point. We did. We thought it would be. But so what, we, what big change happened to make it possible? Well, once again, uh, with what we knew at that time, it looked like that would be difficult. So, but we started out on the journey anyway, 
And as we started on the journey, we found ways to shorten it. For example, we had a lot more flights uh, planned prior to landing on the moon than we actually did. For example, testing the Saturn V. Uh, George Miller, one of the smart guys up there in headquarters said, we're gonna test, we've tested on the ground, the S4B and the S1 and the S2 sorta. We're gonna put them all together and test them all at once because we've run out of time and we wanna get to the moon by the end of the decade. And people thought that was a crazy idea. People said, no way, it's too many unknowns. We couldn't possibly do that. There's no way, and George Miller kept saying, if we want to get to the moon by the end of the decade, we're going to have to do this. And I can remember when that was proposed, I thought it was a real crazy idea, not very good idea. Looking back, it was a great idea. Now, Von Braun might have been in favor of it, or he might not, but I'm sure if we asked him after it was all done, he would have said, what a great idea. We never thought of that when it began, and that compressed the, maybe the flight schedule by a whole year, or maybe eight months or something like that. We did a lot of that. We, were, we had a goal to get to the moon by the end of the decade, and we were trying to do it. That doesn't mean we were being careless, but it meant we were doing everything we possibly could to make that, uh, that goal that President Kennedy set for us. And we did, in fact, make it. Now, you mentioned the guys who thought we didn't go to the moon. This must be what you're talking about. What? We, we found that. You've, I guess you're familiar with the Fox special. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with it. I watched it. Yes. It's, it's a good, uh, it's, it's, it's a money-making thing. They don't have the landing legs extended. You know why? It won't, it won't hold the lunar module up on Earth. But that's not, uh, those landing legs aren't extended. But, uh... You know, this is just, this is some, you know, guys stand around saying, how can I make some money and make a movie? Well, I can make porno. That's good. I'm a filmmaker, and I've been in the business about 15 years, and I've been asked even to testify in court as to the authenticity of footage. And I saw this footage. It's dated by an atomic clock three days into the flight. All the astronauts are identified, and they're, we're, they're there putting the transparency over the window. They're clearly pretending to be halfway to the moon when they're not halfway to the moon. That is bullshit. I don't care what you say. I went to the moon and back, and everyone that's a scientist knows it. Now, if you want to not believe it, it's okay, you know? It's okay. It's a better story. It's ju it just happens to be a lie. That's all. Would you swear to the bi on the Bible that you walked on the moon? I'm not going to do it because I'll do it over here. I won't do it on your camera. Well, why not? Because it just isn't an appropriate thing to do. Well, but you're an asshole to do that. You're the same guys, just different guys as you did the other person I told you about. Well, would you put your hand on, if you walked on the moon, here's the opportunity to set the record straight. Okay. To put your okay. left hand on the Bible. Left hand. Raise your right hand. Okay. And you realize this can be used as a video deposition in the future. And if you lie, you'll be guilty of perjury. I understand that. Okay. Say your name. My name is Alan Bean. I swear to God and affirm. I swear to God and affirm. Under penalty of perjury. Under penalty of perjury. Treason. Treason. No, not treason. Treason has nothing to do with it. Let me rephrase this and say, I've got my hand on the Bible. I went to the moon, I walked on the moon, all the other people that you think are people that NASA says went to the moon and walked on the moon oh, you won't did went, go to the moon and walk on the moon. You won't say under penalty of treason. What's treason? That's, that's uh, doing something fraudulent to the taxpayers. That's crap. Well, what that about isn't under penalty of eternal damnation? Under penalty of inter eternal, eternal damnation. damnation. And under penalty of treason. Treason, doesn't, treason is when you sell out your country. Well, if you used $135 billion to not go to the moon. That's still not treason. Treason is if you tell secrets to another thing. I have said enough. Now, you can use that and say, well, you didn't say something else. No. I know how people are. It's okay. Well, I've, Take your stuff and get the fuck out. I've asked six other astronauts if they would swear on the Bible, and yeah. they refused to do it. Neil Armstrong refused to do it. He Michael just Collins think, I know. I know that. I know they do. Now, do you believe in God? Do I? Yeah. Pretty much. I wouldn't swear on the Bible if I didn't believe it. 
But it doesn't make any difference. You'll change it like you want. Take your stuff and go, guys. Why don't you? Well, I know for a fact you didn't walk on the moon. I've That's seen the fine. That's fine. It's okay if you know it. Do you understand that? <laughs> you can have any opinion you want. That's what's wonderful about this country. You can believe anything you want. And it's okay with me, for sure. Right. Get your stuff and go. Okay. Yeah, right here's fine. I'm Bart with ABC Digital. How are you doing? Um, I was given a classified tape from the Apollo program. It's 31 years old. It's an unedited reel, including outtakes from the mission. Hmm. Uh, it's got about 20 takes of a single shot of the mission. What mission? Apollo 11. Yes. And the photography is being forged in the mission. They're faking a shot of being halfway to the moon. And they refer to you on the tape as a shot that was done during Apollo 10, where you put a transparency over the window and move the camera of the Earth and move the camera back away from the window, turn off the lights in the spacecraft, and appeared to be halfway to the moon when, in fact, they were in Earth orbit. Huh, really? Yeah, and they said it was the same way that you did it on Apollo 10. So we wanted to give you the opportunity to put your left hand on the Bible, to raise your right hand, to swear to God. Stick it in your ear. Well, you were giving you an opportunity to swear to God under oath that you walked on the moon. I don't do that kind of thing. Well, if you really walked on the moon, what's the problem of swearing to God that you did? Do you believe in God? You want me to knock you in the head? Well, I want you to, I want you to swear Get to God on the Bible you. that you walked on the moon. Okay. If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you if you don't leave me alone. I got to a point on, uh, on my two flights to the moon, particularly my last flight when I actually lived, actually made the moon my home for over three days. You know, you, be, you, you become detached from one planet. You become detached from Earth which is your identity with reality. But we launched at night at a circle of the Earth about uh, one and a half times and headed out to the moon for a three-day voyage when we got there. So the engine you, is loud? You get, you get, pardon? Is the engine loud as you're descending? Well, it, well, the engine is very loud. It's very difficult to tell the difference between feeling sound and hearing sound, but yes, it's loud. When you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. It's, it's a very kinetic, very dynamic period of about 10 to 12 minutes and you get down to 200 feet and you go through an area where you're either going to land or you're basically going to crash. So is the earth I guess is six times bigger than earth, the moon is from earth? The, the, earth right? the earth is about four times bigger than a full moon looks to us from earth. It was very close to the horizon on Apollo 17 and that was unique for us. We didn't have to look up like most of the other flights from most of the other landing sites were to look at the Earth. I mean, I just glanced over my shoulder, and there's the Earth. It was there all the time. It was so prominent. It was almost involuntarily while you're going about your work and being a lunar geologist and exploring and driving a rover, you'd always be confronted by the Earth itself. It was, I tell you what, it was almost like a security blanket uh, because you knew it was there. Uh, it, 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 was the, it was the warmth that accompanied your visit to another planet. For instance, uh, our lunar module, when we lifted off the surface, had to burn for seven minutes and 14 seconds. And that's just light off, only one engine. Uh, you know, we had redundant or backup valves, and, but only one engine, one set of propellant tanks. It had to light off and had to burn for seven minutes and 14 seconds. If it quit earlier than seven minutes and seven seconds, we came back down to the moon, uh, and there was no rescue. So there was no strange phenomenon going through the belts of any kind. No, nothing no, happened. No, there was no, 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 no great unknowns. No science fiction uh, going to the moon. It was all science fact. Although sometimes it seemed like it was science fiction. I saw a CNN report f about three years ago. The space shuttle went to about 365 miles, and that was the closest they got to the belts since the moon missions went through them. And they were about. I guess, 650 miles away from the belts. And they reported that it was more dangerous than previously believed. 
and that when they were 650 miles away inside a shielding better than you guys used, they could see the radiation with their eyes closed going through their skulls and the retinas of their closed eyes. Well, I, I don't know about the shuttle. The shuttle doesn't have the capability to go very far, uh, 400 miles. I don't know exactly where the <laughs> bell element. Quiet. Hey. 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 Quiet. You know, the shuttle doesn't have the capability to, to fly very far away from Earth, uh, maybe three, 400 miles. Uh, I don't know exactly how far out the radiation Van Allen belt is. It, it didn't seem to bother us very much. Did you see shooting stars? Uh, but uh, Did you see the shooting stars? Yeah, I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, a lot of noise going on. It, so I, I, don't, I don't know the results of some of the experiments they've conducted. The point is they can't get that far from here, and, and they're really in the protective confines of the Earth, uh, outside the atmosphere, certainly. Now, on the way to the moon, we did conduct a lot. We didn't just, we weren't passengers away to the moon. We're passengers. We conducted all kinds of experiments, and, and one of them was an experiment where we closed our eyes, and then we put some light-sensitive pads on our eyes, and we could literally, yes, we could see, we could see, traces of radiation or traces of something going through our eyes. We conducted this experiment both going to the moon and coming back from the moon several times. Now, what that all meant, I don't know, but it wasn't the kind of, it wasn't the kind of radiation that gave us a problem of any kind. But you could see it. You could close your eyes and just, you could see these things shoot by. We all saw it. Not on our mission, by the way, they hadn't been discovered yet. We did it on more than one mission. I guess you knew Von Braun, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They found a publication of his that he did prior to, the, <laughs> prior to the goal being set to go to the moon. And in it he says, it is commonly believed that man will fly directly from the earth to the moon. But to do this, we would require a vehicle of such gigantic proportions that it would prove an economic impossibility. Calculations have been carefully worked out on the type of vehicle we would need for the nonstop flight from the Earth to the Moon and to return. The figures speak for themselves. Three rockets would be necessary. Each rocket ship would be taller than the Empire State Building, 1,250 feet, and weigh about 10 <sighs> times the tonnage of the Queen Mary, or some 800,000 tons. Now, the Saturn V rocket weighed 2,500 tons. Now that's a difference of 32,000 percent. How do you explain that that change was made within a three-year period? All right, is this a Bible? Yeah, absolutely. It's I my think Bible. this is ludicrous, and I want you to put that on film. It's ludicrous. I swear. Under penalty of perjury? I swear, swear under per penalty of perjury. Treason? And, treason. And eternal damnation. And eternal damnation. That and, I walked and on the moon death, during Apollo that, 17. That I walked on the moon on Apollo 17 for 75 hours. I lived on the moon for Apollo, on Apollo 17 for 75 hours. Well, six other astronauts did not swear in the Bible when they had the opportunity. Well, that's fine. I probably, you know why they didn't? The same reason I almost didn't, because it's absolutely ludicrous for you to ask me that. I, I, I probably would have done what the other six did because I'm just as stubborn as anybody else. And I said, I don't need to prove to you that I went to the moon. I know I went. But I did that. You can put that on tape, and it's there, and you can show it to anybody you want. You know what I did with the Hasselblad? He left it's it. Sitting, it's sitting face up to the sun without a back on it so that somebody, somebody's going to go back and find out what kind of deterioration the lens suffered because it was facing straight up. Where is the lunar rover? It's a mile behind the... How do you think we took the pictures of the liftoff on Apollo 17? with a television camera. How do you think we missed him on Apollo 16 because of the time delay, by the time the guy sent the signal, it was gone and the camera couldn't track fast enough. So on 17 he sent the signal a second and a half or three quarters of a second earlier so that the camera got the signal and we were, how do you think that happened? I've got a book telling me I didn't go to the moon that, that thick, okay? There's a book there when all, you can't see stars in the daytime and the shadows in the wrong place. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? 
we were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Mr. Collins, Bart Sibrel, ABC Digital. How are you? Good. I'm the gentleman who found the uh, classified tape from your mission of you faking the window shot, putting the transparency over the window when you were supposedly halfway to the moon when in fact you were in Earth orbit. I have no idea what you're talking about. I think you must be some kind of wacko. Okay, well, we have the opportunity to set the record straight. Well, we're asking you, you to... I'm not on the record right now. Would we're asking go, you to... Would you please go away? Well, asking you to swear in the Bible that you orbited the moon. Would you please go away? Well, if you really orbited the moon, why won't you swear in the Bible that you did so? Can you tell me why you would have a problem doing that? Would you please go away? You don't remember the shot where you put the transparency over the window? We have it being done up to about 10 hours before they supposedly walked on the moon. I just don't understand why if you orbited the moon you wouldn't have a problem about swearing to the Bible on it. Can you tell me why? Are you afraid for the truth to come out? I think you're some kind of wacko. I really do. Well, I think it's wacky to not swear to God on something that's supposed to be obvious. Hey, Bart with ABC Digital. Um, we need to get back to that okay. signing. One quick question. We've All right. Very uh, I was given time. a classified. Okay. I was given a classified tape showing part of the Apollo mission being falsified, of lunar orbit being falsified. Being falsified. Correct. We got an unedited tape from a source at That's the Johnson Space Center. Yes. Totally nonsense. We wanted to give you the opportunity to swear in the Bible that you orbited the moon during oh, Apollo is, 15. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Come on. Just one last question. If you orbit the moon, do you have a pro why do you have a problem swearing to God that you did so? Sir, I don't, but I don't feel like I have to do that because data speaks for itself. Well, we have proof that the mission was falsified. No, you don't have to, sir. Well, we do. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, here. Thank you. All righty. Howdy, Bart Sibrel, ABC Digital. Uh, I was given a classified tape from Apollo 11 showing them taking the photography of lunar orbit. Why don't you quote me and say it's bullshit? Well, would you mind swearing on the Bible that you orbited the moon? If you really orbited the moon, why would you have a problem swearing to God that you did so? Mr. Anders, can I take a picture with you real quick, sir? Oh, we are. No more, we're through. Okay, thank you, sir. Sorry. I've got on the tape Neil Armstrong rigging part of the photography where he puts that. I gotta tell you how screwed up. Thank you, Mr. Anders. Well, if you really walked on the moon, what do you have a problem? I mean, uh, orbited the moon, why do you have a problem swearing to God that you did so? Would you please just stay back? Howdy, Buzz. Who's that? How's it going? Remember me? What's your name? Bart, Bart Sibrel. Would you uh, give your name to my uh, oh, sister? Yeah, I got one for you, one for your lawyer to sue me. Yeah, That's right. Well, I hope you do. Want to sue you. I'd love to go to court and show yeah. the window shot. I know you'd like to get a lot of attention, wouldn't you? Well, you're the one getting money for something you yeah. didn't do. You're getting a lecture <laughs> for walking on the moon when you didn't. Well, that's called being a thief. Why don't you just that's called being a thief. Do you think you can get to heaven without repenting? Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? 
I'm not trying to get you the tell him to get out of here. This is a hotel. We'll call right, wait, the police. We solicit. pay. Does Come on in not, here. We'll call the police. Solicit you like that? Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? I, it doesn't, sir. I don't I have nothing to do with this. But okay. you cannot solicit on this property. We just paid right now, to rent out the penthouse to shoot up there. So. You can't solicit like this. On the keep, 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 keep shooting. All right. Well, then I go through my measures. Yeah, you gotta keep shooting, man. Okay, well, you can put it on your shoulder, don't be shy. Just come with me, Buzz. You really like it, don't you? You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black, if you ever thought of it. Saying Will I you misrepresented get it myself. Away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. Mr. Armstrong, Bart Sibrel, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Will you put your left hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked on the moon? Gentlemen. Mr. Sibrel. Yes? <clears throat> if you really walked on the moon, why would you not do that? So why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Sibrel, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. Really? Well, no, it's a real Bible. You have the opportunity to have $5,000. The meeting is not open. Well, you have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you'd swear on the Bible that you Please. walked on the moon. Please I have a tape. It'd be fine. Why don't you I swear won't. to... Why not? Why won't you do it? So why don't you put your hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked yeah, on the moon? Mr. Seibel has made a fool of himself in front of the world. Mr. Seibel, you do not deserve answers. Tell us, what is this video? I'm not quite following it on right now. Well, that looks like a Buzz Aldrin photograph there. <clears throat> I can't see it too clearly from my angle here. Is this a documentary about the moon missions? I believe so. well. It's, I think it's a series of uh, <clears throat> a series of clips and vignettes. I'm not quite sure that's a documentary. Was this something from broadcast or something that? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'd, without looking at the label and looking at it more closely, I can. Do, I have a dozens of these things in here. What What is this? You're talking about shadows and stuff like that. What is that all about? You know, this might have come from. <clears throat> some of the challenges to the fact <clears throat> ah yes <clears throat> from the challenges by the group that has said we never went to the moon and they're trying to pick holes in some of the lunar photographs and it, <clears throat> it's an interesting subject because uh, they're totally misguided we did exactly what we said we did uh, and they can pick hole, try to pick holes in the photography uh, all they want to but uh, Why is it that you have a copy of it? Big pardon? Oh, why do you have a copy of it? People send me stuff all the time. I, <clears throat> I have boxes and boxes of, of video from uh, various television programs, various uh, speeches that I've done. Uh, I must have three or four hundred of them. I don't, I, I look at very few of them. So someone sent you this? I'm sure that, well, they obviously did. That's why I have it. Oh, so it's not something that you acquired no. or ordered or anything no. like that? No. You have to understand, I get, I get a dozen, at least a dozen books a month to review, half, two or three, maybe four dozen uh, videos a year from various people just want me to have it, so they send it along. Hmm. We only brought like one clip. If you want to throw it in, okay, sure. pop that one out. Oh, that was stopping. Yeah, check it again. Yeah, we can edit this right way. We don't have to worry about doing that. Well, it goes in. This is, what is this? Oh, this is a shot from 130,000 miles out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess it's that from moon approaching, the, it's from approaching the moon, looking back at the earth. Mm -hmm. 
now I've seen this on a couple of flights. Is, do, was this something that you got, although this is from Apollo 11, did you shoot a shot of the Earth like this? Mm -hmm. So you had a, a TV camera in the spacecraft. That's correct. And this is, I guess, the Earth zoomed in at a distance. Yep, seems they to be. They get shot a little bit halfway to the moon. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of, now I, I guess the cloud cover looks That's what you're looking right. at. Now what is that right there? What is what? There's like an arm, it looks like hair on an arm getting in front of the window. Now maybe somebody, maybe <laughs> somebody got their <clears throat> arm in front now of I it. I thought that was the arm of God <laughs> moving <laughs> right, across yeah. the earth. I couldn't quite figure that out. I suspect out. that was the edge of the window, more than likely, that they were shooting at. What did the Earth look like from a great distance? There about it is like again, 130,000 miles out. About like that. So it was pretty small at the distance <coughs> of the moon? Yes, but I think the better images are the Hasselblad images that have been taken on every flight and are the most published pictures in the history of the world. What is that in the top left? If that's the Earth, is that like a, another spacecraft? No, oh, no, no, no. But I have no idea what that is. It's uh, some aberration on the film of some sort. Oh, those are shadows, I think. Or reflections, probably reflections that are just reflecting. Turn that back there. again so we get another shot of it. If we you're going to press me on this, I'm not going to talk to you anymore because I won't pursue this. All of this attempt to say the Apollo programs were fake is just sheer nonsense. And you can talk till hell freezes over and you're wrong. Okay. Well, would you affirm? I won't continue well, on this line. Would you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? You bet your sweet ass. Okay. Put your left hand on the Bible. Put your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand and say, I, Edgar Mitchell. I, Edgar Mitchell. Affirm. Affirm. Under penalty of eternal damnation. I don't believe in that, but under if you penalty think, of eternal damnation. That I walked on the moon on Apollo 14. That I walked on the moon on Apollo 14. Well, you know, you're the first astronaut to do that. We asked six other astronauts to swear on the Bible, and they refused to do it. Well, <laughs> I don't particularly like to take oaths like that either, because I don't accept the Bible as a gospel of anything except a historical record. But we did go to the moon. You bet your sweet ass we went to the moon. Okay, turn off the camera. Your interview is done. I've given you all the time I'm going to give you. Okie dokie. Good to meet you. Okay. I don't say it's a pleasure. I understand. Please get your ass out of my house. Okay. And you came here under false pretenses, and I think you're an asshole. Well, and if you continue this, and if you press us, I will personally take you to court. I, I hope that you do. I invite you to. I'm going to give you my card so you can arrange that. And I'm encouraging I, you to you're arrange. Frank, you're frankly not worth it. No, no. I, I, we have you on the record saying you'll take me to court. I hope you do. Because we have proof that would prove it in a court of law that Apollo 11 didn't go to the moon. <laughs> and I think it's something that you should see. It. I don't say that lightly, believe me. I don't say it lightly. You, you, you have joking, it, sir. People can have fun and maybe do that if they feel like they want to have a little fun on a trip to the moon. And as an independent producer, okay, we're heading out. doing that is against moral ethics. Lying about going to the moon is a satanic lie hey, of gigantic proportions. I don't hit people, but you're going to be on the deck unless you get well, I'm the heading out. out. I appreciate it. And get the hell out of my house. You ever get a gun to shoot them at them before they get out of the office? <laughs> we have a video camera running if you want to do it. Right. I, I, that would be great footage for us. See you later. In court, I hope. You want to call the CIA? Have them whacked.
waxing. 